All right, so now we have our collectibles in. We have our enemies, we have our animations. Everything seems to be going well. So now we're gonna add uh, some sound effects. So I'm just gonna grab some free ones off of the asset store. If we click asset store, it'll connect. Uh, you do have to be connected to the internet. However, you're probably connected to the internet if you're watching this video, so. So I'm just gonna type sound effects into the asset store. It's a little bit laggy, but it's fine. Um, so then we're gonna scroll down and set our pricing to free assets. And then I used this zero rare sound FX retro pack in the test project that I did. So now I'm gonna click import. Okay, so we're gonna import all these sounds. And then we'll wait for that to finish. All right, so then we're gonna want actual music. So I'm just gonna type in like electronic music into our asset store and then click search. We're gonna to wanna to make sure it's free. So we'll click free assets. And then I just use this electronic video game music. So we'll click import. Then we'll import all these files. Okay, so now if we go to project, we should see um, our zero rare retro sound effects and our electronic video game music. So you can of course use whatever music you want, but to, but to have a song playing, you just click main camera and add a new component called audio source. And then under audio clip, you're gonna drag in one of these and then click play. And then it automatically plays the music for us. So you can select any one of these or you can grab your own. You can put in like a song that you downloaded off the internet if you want to. I'm just gonna use this so that we don't get sued or something for having uh, a non-free to use song on these videos. We're also going to turn the volume down so that it's not too loud because we're going to want to have other sound effects in here as well. So the first one that we can look at is our gem. We're going to give our, we're actually going to delete this second gem because we want to apply all of our changes to one gem so that we can clone it. We're going to add a new audio source. And then the one that I went with was under coin 15. So if you double click here, it'll actually play the sound. So I'm going to click our gem and drag coin 15 under audio source. However, there's two problems. When we load the game, it plays the sound. This is an easy fix. Uncheck this play on awake. And then our second problem is if we actually collect the gem, it doesn't play the sound. And that's because we haven't played the sound on awake, so we have to programmatically tell it when to play the sound. So up here at the top, we're gonna have a public audio source, source. Then we're gonna do source equals get component audio source. And then we're going to have a function, public void play. Whoops. And we're going to do source dot play. Then if we go back to our collectible controller, um, we can type in get component play sound dot play. So now every time we collect our collectible, it will play the sound. Now we are going to run into a problem where we can collect the collectible multiple times. Even though we set the sprite renderer off, the box collider is still there. 
So we will be able to continuously collect our sprite and play it even though our sprite is invisible. So we're going to have public bool is collected equal to false. Under collected, we're going to set is collected equal to true. And then here we're going to say if collision.tag equals player and is collected equals false. Then we'll call collected. So we don't want to call this multiple times if our player continues to touch the box collider. And then under reset, we're going to set is collected back equal to false. Okay, let's load up our game and see if we can collect our gem. So it makes a noise. Let's make sure after we're defeated we can do the same thing. Okay, and it works. So let's move on to the next sound. So now we have to move on to our player, but we have a little bit of a problem right now. So if we go to our play sound, you'll notice we do source.play which is all good, but if we go back to, let's say, um, our gem, which has a play sound attached to it, or an audio source attached to it, you'll notice there's only room for one audio clip. And for something like a gem, this is completely fine because we just collect the gem and we move on. But with a player, we want to make a noise when we take damage and also uh, when we jump. So we're going to have multiple audio clips per audio source. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to add play sound and then rather than have source we're going to create a list of sources so we're going to want to add a public list of audio clips and we're going to call it audio clips equal to new list of audio clips Oh, whoops. Okay, so now we're gonna drag and drop in the inspector a bunch of different audio clips into this variable. So if we go back to our inspector, we'll wait for it to reload. You'll see this play sound script now has multiple different audio clips. So we can give it two different ones. And then if we go back to our project, We'll find a hit. I personally am going to go with 16. So I'm going to drag that in. And then we're going to have one for jump and I'm going to go with 20. So then when we call our play function, we're just going to send in an integer. Int sound. And then we're going to set our source dot clip to equal audio clips sound. So now because we have, let's go back to here so I can explain this a little better. We have our first element, element zero is hit and our second element, element one is jump. So if we send in zero, it will play, it will set our source.clip to be our hit clip. And then if we send in one, it will set it to be our jump clip. So we can do the exact same thing for our gem, except we're going to send in zero. And then back in our inspector, if we go to gem, we just need to make a slight alter. We actually don't need this audio clip here anymore. So we can click delete. So audio source doesn't have any. And then if we uh, set audio clips to one, we can drag in coin 15. Oh, I grabbed the wrong coin. Whoops. 15. Okay, so we have this element 0, which has our coin 15. And even though there's no audio clip in here, when we click it, it sets it to coin 15. Because of this piece of code right here. So now if we go back to our player controller, we can have a public play sound 
play sound. And then on start, we'll set play sound equals get component play sound. And then on player defeated, we're going to type in play sound dot play one or actually our hit was zero and then on our jump if we go back to our update where it says jump now equals is true we're going to do play sound dot play zero now if we go back to unity and then we click play hopefully it makes a sound when we jump okay oh okay so we added play sound to our player but we didn't add an audio source so we're gonna do that and then click play again so we have them reversed so I accidentally typed in zero in here it should be one for jumping so we'll go back to unity now there's an error here saying object reference not set to an instance of an object but when I click it it's not doing anything so if I restarted unity chances are it would fix it we're not going to worry about it for now okay so it's plays our sound I'm just going to lower the volume here a little bit and then it plays our uh, defeated sound as well okay so everything is working